What's good, y'all? Welcome back to the channel, all right? I'm Marlon Wise, co-owner CEO of World Envision. We on the road right now. Just grabbed my daughter some flowers. She going to kindergarten. In this video, we just sat down with me, Nick, and Tommy with City On My Chest. Tommy had an event out in New Canoes, Virginia, where he had other entrepreneurs, brand owners come out, and we gave them mass amount of information on getting your brand started, getting your brand scaled. You gonna watch this video from start to finish. I want everybody to let me know what was the number one thing that they learned from this video. Make sure you like, subscribe to the channel, run us up. I appreciate y'all. Let's get straight into it. You're not gonna get past a certain level if you don't have a strong enough why because it's not gonna allow you to do the things that you need to do. Like most of us go out here and get it because our why is we gotta survive. We got kids that we gotta feed and take care of. So your why is that strong that you're willing to wake up at whatever time you gotta wake up. You're willing to work however long you gotta work. You have to have that same fire for your brand. And if your why isn't strong enough, you're not gonna do the things that you need to do to actually grow your brand because it isn't attached to a big enough why. Personal, like, as soon as somebody say the word personal brand, I quickly think of, like, social media. Um, but, like, building your personal brand is on and off social media. And really, the most important is, like, all social media. Because, like, at the end of the day, you the one that's running the business. So, if you're not, like, showing up in your personal world just to, for your business, then your business is not going to be able to get to the level that it need to get to. So, like, I would say, you know, with us and with me, like, we haven't, like, directly just focused on just growing our personal social medias because we always want the, the brand to live on its own, uh, even though everybody still know us for wearing World and Vision and us being Nick and Marlon with the YouTube channel or whatever it is, uh, we we still allow the brand to just be the fore focus, the products, you know, the and allow us to more live in the background so later in the future, we could go out and build our personal brand and continuously leverage that to make the brand even bigger. But nowadays, I'm just saying, you know, people, using their content to add their product into the content to then make sales. It's like how my boy Hollywood Shaq, you know, he rocking his rocking product and, you know, putting it on. And then all he got to do is take his audience, put his product on. And now, now he able to make sales by him just wearing his own stuff. Yep. So I feel like personal brand could be a way of growing the audience and your business could be a way of putting a product in front of the audience that you grew on the personal side. And I'll piggyback off that. Um, before anybody buys a product, they they invest in you, the person. Um, I tell people all the time, um, I'm known for community, but I was, imagine if I was out here being rude, uh, disrespectful to people, not showing up, not keeping, you know, everything that my brand stands for doesn't go hand in hand with, you know, my personal brand. So before you can get somebody to, to uh, buy into that logo or design that you're selling, it's who you are and what are you doing that ultimately leads into, okay, they are what they, who they say they are or what you portraying. Um, <clears throat> with me, I I had a conversation with a guy and he told me um, a long time ago that you need I need community validation uh, when it comes to my brand. And when he said that, you know, I was like, what do you mean? He was like, yeah, you got a cool brand. You, you making sales. But why should I support you? Why should these organizations and people who have a lot of money invest in you or um, pour money into your events? And he was like, there's certain groups out here that are always going to get support. The school system, police department, fire fire department, um, first responders, things like that, that, that people are always going to support. And he was like, when you win those people over, that's when you'll start really taking your brand to the next level. So I'm like, okay. I thought I was moving the right way because I was doing some things in the community. But when I bought into that and that really gave me Tommy Reeman, not City on my chest, somebody that really cares about his community, I feel like it really took City on my chest to the next level. I like that. I like that. So with that being said, um, how do you feel like telling a story ties into leveraging the brand as well? We all know we live in like a social media era. <laughs> Everybody got to tell a story. Everybody knows that y'all know everybody viral on TikTok with part one and part 30. Everybody is following, following all of these stories. So how does, how important is that creating a story to, or telling your story? Um, Like, honestly, your story is what's going to carry your brand. I could pretty much guarantee that. Watch this. We started our brand with 12 shirts and hundred and twenty dollars, man. Hey, you ain't get it right now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but, hey, but that was cool. But what that's like we go everywhere and people say the same thing. 
that's like our why that's our story like people are saying that exact same thing everywhere we go and we tell people all the time that we don't sell a tangible product we sell an intangible feeling that you can rise above and do what, what you actually want to do so when you put on the product that's just you representing what you actually standing for um and for us we look at it inside of a golden circle so a lot of us when we start our brand we're actually you know speaking about it in the wrong way and what i mean by that is when we look at the golden circle it starts with why as that bullet that first bullet point it starts with how is the next one and then it starts with what but a lot of times when we start our brand we converse we conversate with people from what we do how we do it and what and why we do it and i'll give you a perfect example by that so like when you conversate from the what how why is more sounds like a, I have a brand, you're getting somebody to support you. Yeah, I have a brand. That's the product that we do. You know, we've been selling it. We here inside Patrick Henry Mall selling our product and we trying to inspire the city to turn up. All right. That's how most of you guys, you know, talk about your brand. But the way that I want you to talk about it is speaking from the why first. So what do we do? We provide original designs and branded fashion to urban youth who feel stagnant and trapped by what the environment tells them we can, we cannot do. So you see us, we have this product um, that we selling. We got, you know, just about everything, but the product ain't, isn't really what we selling. We selling the message that you can rise above and do exactly what you want to do. You tell me what one you're going to support. You start with the why first because people support why you do it. They don't support what you do. All right. We all know that. You know, and because we we all have Apple phones, right? Everybody have an Apple phone, right? And we understand what their why is, innovation, simplicity, all right? They actually convey their why through their products. So it's the iPhone, it's the MacBook, it's all this that allowing you to create all this content. That's their, that's their actual product, but their why is to innovate the space and create. Mm. I like that Marlon always killed it with that with that golden circle. But I would say, like your why is gonna be the number one reason why people support you, uh, other than like your product just being this product that nobody can like. Like we need UPS. Like even though they have a why, you know. Well, I ain't gonna say we need them because they got FedEx and everything too. But mm -hmm. we need a shipping company. Um, and you know sometimes like everybody don't need clothes, but why would they buy your clothes before they buy World Envision or anything else? is the thing that make you different which is your story like we probably we could all use the same manufacturer but we gonna all get different results mm -hmm. and the reason being is like communication like the community the gap in between where you are right now and where you want to be is communicating so in order for you to get to where you want to be you got to communicate why people should support you so i would say that's the number one difference maker in your company because you can make the highest quality stuff but if you're not able to really get me involved emotionally, I'm probably not going to spend that much bread with you. Brand owners that's ready to acquire their first 100 customers and make over $1,000 every single month, this is for you. We have created our Activate Your Vision University. We have been working on this for the last four months. And inside of this university, it has every system that we have created and are currently using to continuously scale our brand, World and Vision, right now. Yes, you're gonna get the Facebook ads. Yes, you're gonna get the email and text message marketing play. But ultimately, I want you to join our network of brand owners for only $7 for seven days. Now, at the end of these seven days, let me go ahead on and break the news to you. We will not charge your card like other most subscription-based programs, all right? We will allow you to experience and enjoy these seven days without having you thinking on the eighth day, oh, I'm about to get charged. No, this is not that. We want to see if you are a good fit for the network, and we will also want to see if we are a good fit for you to help you scale and help you grow to, like I say, acquiring your first 100 customers and making over $1,000 every single month. Click the link somewhere on the screen. Get access for only $7. Every brand owner, every clothing brand, we can help you scale. Let's get it. I would say telling my why is something that I truly wanted to improve on in 2024. Um, cause how many times you get an idea in your head and you're ready to record it, then at the last second you're like, man, ain't nobody really trying to see that or hear that, right? Can y'all relate to that? You know, it sound good up here, then it's time to hit record on the phone, then it's like, man, don't nobody. And and mm -hmm. truth be told, like your why and why why you do it is the sole reason why you should do it. Um, as much as I try to do for the community, you know, it's still times I'm not documenting, you know why I'm doing it or what's really driving and motivating. And I had to have a deep talk with myself, like, yo, I want to really, you know, dive down into my niche. And when I did that, I started writing it down. I realized that my purpose was even deeper than what I 
really thought it was. Like, yeah, I care about my community because I grew up and I had positive people in my com uh, community giving back to me. It felt like the right thing to do. My father was one of them. But then I really thought about it. And as I'm looking at this sheet of paper, I realized that I grew up in a single father household, which a lot of people didn't have. So a part of me was like, it struck a nerve that I'm really doing it for people who may not have that father figure. These kids out here, a lot of times, single parent household, maybe just their mother or a guardian. So I'm like, I never even realized that, that that's really what's driving me is the fact that I had such an impactful father in my life that I'm trying to give the community a person that they can lean on. And if you do have somebody and you're blessed to have a father, maybe I'm just that extra battery pack that I can just give you that motivation. But truth be told, I felt like my father, he was a football coach in the community. He fathered a whole generation. And here I am, kind of a split image of what he was doing, but through a whole different pathway, a whole different brand. And I just realized, I said, man, I've been doing this for years and I never really thought about it like that. It took me sitting down, write it down, write down my why. What's my purpose? What really drives me? What's really tugging on my heart? And that's when I came up with that. But truth be told, it's like, okay, that's cool. It don't mean nothing unless I'm telling it to the world. You can come with the best designs in the world, but if when you click on it and you see it, you're going to say, oh, that's cool and keep it moving. But when you really know that, oh, this is why I'm doing it, it's an emotional connection. It's The shirt is, like he said, the tangible item that we can take home. But what you really buying is when you see this C is like, okay, do you really know who this guy and what he does and why he do it? Yeah, design's going to sell if you got some heat. You know what I mean? That, that's not going to change. But to really take it to the next level, you really got to dive into your why and that purpose and then make the content around it. And let me buy a shirt, bro, right now. Hey, listen, I was about to it's say, we needed a violin after that one. That was just a good that. one. Appreciate it. Good job, T. Uh, it's just to add on to that, too. Um, Like, you're not going to get past a certain level, one, if you don't have a strong enough why, because it's not going to allow you to do the things that you need to do. Like, most of us go out here and get it because our why is we got to survive. We got kids that we got to feed and take care of. So your why is that strong that you're willing to wake up at whatever time you got to wake up. You're willing to work however long you got to work. You have to have that same fire for your brand. And if your why isn't strong enough, you're not going to do the things that you need to do to actually grow your brand because it isn't attached to a big enough why. Mm -hmm. Like, so I, you got to do what he said. You really got to dig deep into your, inside of yourself so that way you can actually grow any brand in any company because that applies to not just a apparel brand, any company. Like if that why isn't strong enough, you're not going to be motivated to do those because it get, we just think everything easy. Like it's, we used to beat ourselves up about like not making 30K in 30 minutes. And so like, you know, like if your why not strong enough, you're not going to go to the grit and you're not going to be figuring out what you got to do. We had 50 <laughs> team members that I managed when I was 23 years old. If you don't have a strong enough why, you're not going to go to in these days where they calling off or they doing this to figure it out. Like you're going to give up. You're going to stop. Even when you even this is the crazy thing. I met people that was doing good and they stopped because it was too much. And why it was too much? Because the why wasn't strong enough for them to continue to fight through. Mm -hmm. I like that. Gems drop. One yes. second, one second, one second. Did y'all peep the flex? He said if we didn't make 30K in 30, in 30 minutes, minutes, we yeah. upset. I said, <laughs> I didn't know you was going to pull that one out more alone. Hey, did y'all peep the flex? 30K <laughs> in 30 minutes, we big Motivation, man. Motivational purposes. Only. Facts, facts. I'm, I'm glad you said that. That kind of brings me to the next question. Um, So we obviously, everybody's here to learn how to build their brand, but how many of y'all have a team? Does anybody have a team? Not too many people, right? Dolo? Okay. All right, so with that being said, when it comes to building a team, what is your advice when you when the, when your brand gets to that point? What's the first thing you investing in? Are you investing in managers, sales? Are you investing in marketing? What's what's the first thing to do? Well, first the first issue that people have before they even get to that point is like, <laughs> how do I even hire? So, like, you really need to be thinking about you get past the point of where you like relying on friends and family. Like, not saying that that's not a help. But what I'm saying, in your mind as an entrepreneur, you need to figure out how to hire people that's not your friends and family. Like you could go, anybody could go get a job around any of these businesses and y'all don't have to be their friends or family. And a lot of times we put ourselves in that box of, I need to figure out who can help me that I know uh, or who next to me that can help me when there's millions of people out here with millions of skills that can help you. You just haven't created a process to find those people. It was things we used to put out yard signs. We ran ads on Indeed, good hire. 
And then from there, we created a, a interview process where we interview people and we just got them rolling. A lot of times, sometimes when we started, we didn't even know, we know that we needed people to fulfill. We didn't have no systems. We just got them in there and started doing it. But now we recommend is like to make it a whole lot easier. If you know, let's just say you fulfilling orders or you have a location like this and you want somebody to come in and help you out, you need to start documenting the processes now, not when they get there. So if it's a fulfillment issue, a fulfillment that you want inside for your online store, it's like, what are you actually doing? How are you documenting that? Like actually document it, make a video about it. So that way when it is time to hire, you're not going back to square one having to teach. You already have something that you can show them that gets them 50% there. And then if they don't know what they need to do, then you already know that's not the person that need to be there. And it allows you to make decisions faster. The reason why our, you know, our brands don't grow as fast as we want them to grow is because we don't make decisions as fast as we need to make them. Like we take weeks to make a decision that should have been made three months ago. <laughs> All right. I would add to that and say just like people like that's on your team, you don't actually have to see them every single day. So what I mean by that is your screen printer is like a part of your team, your graphic designer that you may pay here and there, you know, when you need a design is part of your team. Um, I think like have anybody watched that video was like don't use a heat press. I know you be getting tired of me here yeah. talking about this. <laughs> Lord have mercy. All right, so uh like the whole reason why we made that video is because like you're not realizing that you need that team to help you grow your operations. Like, like only reason why we was able to sell over a hundred thousand t-shirts is because like we had a team that was always making shirts while we was actually focused on growing the business. Like we can't be trying to do the, do it, then trying to grow it, then trying to do it, then trying to grow it. It's like, how do we move with speed? Like what Marlon's saying, and to move with speed, it requires a team. And I think a lot of times, the first thing that we think about when we hear team is like, oh, that's gonna be expensive. Oh, I gotta spend money. Uh, now all the money can't come to me. But it's really about like, you able to do so much more with the same amount of time that you already had. Like, I always feel like you could do more with less. I'm always thinking about doing more with less. You do not need a lot to do a lot. You really just need to think strategically, think smarter, and think about it in a way, everything that you think about, like Marlon saying, think about a process to do it, even if it was like without you. So everybody think about how can I do it, but how can you do it without you actually doing it? And whenever you start thinking about things like that, I feel like now you starting to get in your world of uh, building your team. And before we pass, pass it, I need everybody to write this down right here. If you don't put in your notes, because this is what allows you to think to the to on the levels that you need to think so that way you can create these processes because a lot of us get stuck in the technician phase, which is gonna be level one. All right. So level one is the technician. That's the person that's doing it, doing it, doing it. So cake baker. every time you say every time you hear me say technician, say in your mind, do it, do it, do it. And that's probably where you are right now, doing everything, doing the emails, doing the designs, doing the pop ups, doing the photo shoots. You might even be the model. Like, you get what I mean? You doing it all right now. Oh, I got somebody else here. <laughs> you are literally doing all. All right. Next, level two is going to be the manager. All right. The manager manages the technicians. So the manager is overseeing the operations. So the manager is checking on the shoots that's getting done. They're, they're, they're not coordinating those shoots via doing the shoots. They're not coordinating what's happening inside of the warehouse. They're not coordinating on um, getting UGC content from other creators. They're not doing it, they're managing the process of it. All right, that's level two. Level three is gonna be the actual entrepreneur. All right, that's gonna be the person that's creating the vision. That's gonna be the person, manager and entrepreneur could be the person that's creating those operating systems. Might be the entrepreneur in this perspective because that's gonna be you and then you're gonna pass those operating systems down to your manager. Now your manager gonna be managing the systems that you put inside a play for your technicians, all right? So you need to understand that you, even though it's one business right now, you are actually three roles. And you need to understand like, how do you work on each and every role? Because right now you're only making time for one part and that's level one, all right? We're not thinking about what it's gonna be like to be the manager. We're not thinking about it on the entrepreneur level, like how do we create these systems? How do we generate these partnerships? Because we still stuck on level one. So you have to make time for each part inside of that to grow your business because that's what's keep that's what's blocking your mind like 90 uh, percent of what we do is think not do like let me let me 
Let me, let me say that again. 90% of what we do is think. Like we're thinking in meetings and talking. We're not like doing a whole lot of stuff. We're orchestrating more stuff than we actually do. All right? So if you want to be able to grow your business, you actually need to start thinking about how do you remove yourself now? Like doing a pop-up shop, I want to get people to help me do it now, not later. Because the faster that you could do that, the faster you actually could grow and scale your business. The, the thing that Marlon always says, make a schedule, right? When you make a schedule and work on your business, like also make the schedule that you want your schedule to be like in maybe the next three to six months. So you make your schedule now, but then make your make your fantasy schedule. So if that's you hanging out on the beach once a month, put that up there. And you're going to realize that that's what you're working towards every time you work inside your business on those roads. I wonder one, about the beach yet. But yeah, no beach. All right, save your money, put it back in the business. One thing that I learned from these guys on a, um, I was on a Zoom call with them too, um, and I was kind of explaining my processes of my team, my store, and um, they said, "Yo, you gotta, you gotta work on the business, not in the business, if that makes sense." And when he said it, you know, I kind of took a second to think about it, and um, I was like, "He right," because when I when I thought about it, I said all my daily operations kind of revolve around, you know, store processes, which are important. But at the same time, I have team members, you know, I have two managers, I have sales associates, but yet I found myself still kind of diving into the daily operations heavy, making sure that, you know, X, Y, and Z gets done. And, um, and it also comes into delegating, you know, cause we all feel like can't nobody do it as good as me, right? When it comes to our brand, can't nobody do it like us. And if we're going to do it, we're going to do it. And that may be true, but if somebody can do it even close to how you're doing it, it's worth it because it opens up you to really to work on the brand, brand not in the brand. Mm -hmm. And it took, and I'm still, it's still a process for me, but I've been very mindful and conscious to try to, you know, work on that and start delegating and trusting them, creating those systems and letting them, let them operate. Because if I keep sitting in here all day doing, you know, the small things, there's no way we're going to grow these partnerships out here in the community. There's no way we're going to get that next design that's going to be a banger because it's impossible because all my mental capacity is really coming just inside the brand, just daily. And I get we all got to start. We start there. But the second we start, to, we, we start to grow is when we start to find somebody that can come on to the team. And sometimes, like you said, it ain't got to be friends and family because truth be told, friends and family, a lot of times will disappoint you. And then you'll luck up every once in a while and find people that's close to you that's really, you know, down to take the brand to the next level. And that's somewhere that, you know, the people that stuck with me and my team are people that, you know, I've known for a long time. And that usually don't happen that way. And like, I, I lucked up. You know, me and E-Rock, we went to middle school together. Sente, she's married to one of my best friends. Um, his brother's, E-Rock's brother also on the team. It's like, you don't find people like that. Because we also have had, how many people have we came, have come through the team uh, E-Rock, how many people? About 40. And you got to understand, that just comes with the process. You we know had, what I mean? People are going to come. 300 plus. 300 plus. You just had to make my 40 look. Feel <laughs> <laughs> Every now and then, yeah, okay. <laughs> nah, man, yeah, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. <laughs> know what I mean? Trust the process. But it's real, though. It's real, though. That team, that team is everything. And like I said, in the beginning, it's going to be you, you know, 10 toes down. But you got to find, you got to hire, like you say, you got to spend a little money. But if it take less off your plate, it's worth it. Even though it don't seem like it because you're like, man, the money ain't coming into my pocket. I got to pay. It's worth it. You just got to trust it. All right. I got a question because I'm. how is it worth it? It's because, all right, somebody tell me this. Time is money. True or false? True. True. False. <laughs> <laughs> false. False statement. All right. Time is not money. That's a false. You see where everybody minds that, right? Time is life. Because if 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 you lose if you lose your money, what can you do? What can you do if you lose all your money? If you lose all your money, make, make some more. If you lose your time, what happens? Nothing. It's so over with. The mindset of time is money is false. We gotta stop using our time to make money, and we gotta use our money to make more money and get our time back, so we can spend it with the people that we love the most. I like that. That was I, a gem. I hope y'all wrote that one day. That's a commercial. Right. <laughs> Sound like a mission statement. Yeah. <laughs> that was a commercial right there. All right. Use that's your real. money to make more money. Yeah, that was a real good one. I want to uh, piggyback. I know they they interviewing me, but I want to piggyback off of them talking about um, systems being real important. Um, that was one of the questions that I had for them when I first met them last summer. And 
they told me the exact same thing. Write everything down. Write everything down. How you do it. Wow. Make videos. Put them in the phone. And we have implemented that. And it has worked so well as far as training our other team members, as far as us just remembering, having notes, physical notes for ourselves, and having a process that's written down that we can refer to. It's been A1. It's, it's, and it's only going to get better. So. Oh, Tom. Yeah, it's, it's it's been going. Thanks Yo, to those if guys. If it's not written down, it's not it's not legit. Yeah. Just gonna be honest with you, because I I tell you know my team all the time, if I can't see it, it's invisible. Like where where is it? What you was working on? Like I, I mean, you we said it's here, but like where is it? Like it should be. Even if you're thinking about something, you need to jot it down because there's no way we could remember all that. Uh, to the point, there's another tip. If you haven't already, I would start putting everything inside of Google Drive, inside of your Google Drive. So build out folders where you can put these processes, everything that you're doing when you're having meeting notes, like put all that stuff inside your Google Drive. That way you have a place to get it and access it wherever you go and you can always refer back to it. So everything that we do currently is being built inside of a Google Drive or added on like a Notion. That's going to be a project management software that you can use. Your business will make you a lot of money, but your systems will make you a fortune. And why is that? It's like McDonald's. You, you, we purchase McDonald's systems to make us rich. Because they have the systems already in play. Yep. Like it we could come inside your business and turn it around because why? We just gonna input the systems that we already have inside your business. So that's one of the main things that's keeping you from actually growing is the systems that you create because that's the reason why we're able to be here right now. Eight hundred orders got shipped out today and I'm here. All right. We only able to do that because of the systems that we created. Question for y'all. If y'all took a month off or disappeared for a month, could your brand continue to run? Yes or no? Raise hands if they could, if it could. Okay. That was a question they gave me a year ago when it really made me think. Because I'm like, I still got my hands on a lot of pieces. And if I didn't show up tomorrow, a week, or a month, what would happen? Things would stop. Operation. Halt. And that ain't what we want, right? We trying to get like that. He in Virginia, 800 orders went out. So that's what really kind of like amplify my systems of trying to figure things out of how can I take things off my plate that my team members can do? That's it. So um, that being said, what are some of the mistakes that y'all have made in branding? Whether it be marketing, whether it be bad <laughs> manufacturer, <laughs> give it to us. Uh, the biggest mistake is really just trying to grow too fast. So for us, we invested in uh, building a building where we spent um, about a, roughly between one hundred and sixty to one hundred and eighty thousand dollars, which we only got blueprints. I'm about to scream for, uh, for the plans. <laughs> um, and the building is still not here today, and that been two years ago. Uh, and mainly it was because when COVID happened, prices of building mm -hmm. materials went up. So a building that cost one point five million ended up costing three point six million, and the bank went funded. So we basically lost. Well, we look at on display inside of our office. $180,000 plans, uh, but which we wish we would have done is just continue to invest that money in inventory. A lot of times what happened and why our brands, why, you know, sometimes our brands slow up is because we stopped doubling down on what's actually working. So we have a product that's winning and we'd be like, oh, I want to try this. I think this is going to go better. No, it don't. You should keep tripling down on what's working and, to, and then introduce other things at a very smaller quantity, like even if you got to do like 12 of it and see if people really like it before you invest in it, I would never take, you know, my eyes off the prize and invest in merchandise and then winning products. Mm -hmm. That one probably one of the biggest mistakes, but we learned a lot. It was a hard, expensive lesson, but we learned a lot. I say, just throw out a mistake off the dome. I say, um, ads is not really like a it's mistake. The shipping mistake. You can talk about Oh, that. okay. I got a good one. <laughs> All right, so... Uh, one of the things that we do is uh, we use XPS, which is an outside shipping kind of like portal that help us batch 300 orders at once. So uh, like on Shopify, it was only allowing you to do 20 orders when So we when we first started. So now I think it's probably a little bit more. But what we notice is like it's just taking too much time to print 20 orders, print 20 orders, print 20 orders. How do we innovate? How like if we just... If it take us a whole hour to print out 100 orders, we ain't going to be shipping out 800 packages in a day. So we got to figure this out now. So we found XPS and they had uh, it was able to do 300 orders at a time. But if you're not selecting, like you have to go through and literally change first class, priority, first class, priority based on the weight. And if sometimes you don't notice it, 
you could like basically select priority for all the orders when some of them could go out as first class. And if you know, a uh, priority may cost you about eight dollars, nine dollars. First class may cost you four, four to five dollars. That's a big difference. Like mm-hmm. that's a huge difference because we play the volume game, so every dollar count. And it was we did this for like four months. You know, we let we let our hands, you know, off the business, let other people run it. Uh, which still not. I love it. We learned, never make that mistake again. But uh, they was printing every not last to single not take order. your hands off. To yeah. check on what you're doing yeah. and have more and put and put systems in play to to keep to to not have that mistake again. But we probably printed every order for like a good like two months, four, four months priority. Mm. Shipping so, was double, so we was like looking at it, like checking out like just the expenses on shipping. We we're like some man right dog. Like I don't know what it is. It was, it was we was like. No, because we look at our bottom line pretty much, and we like some not right. Some here. ain't right. I'm and like, then, we didn't know what it was at first, basically, but we knew something didn't look right with the numbers. Uh, recommend anybody, everybody should have QuickBooks, where they able to have financial statements for themselves, so that they, they can see like what their business is actually doing, like how much gross, you know, how much you are spending on merchandise, what the expenses are like. It give you net profit on that. So when we going through this, we like some some not right here, and then so we looking through all the categories. And we we know that our percentages. Percentage. So once you start to actually continue to run your business and you do these QuickBooks, you're you gonna have produce these statements. You're gonna start building like data on your company, and you're gonna notice that okay, you know, if I make a hundred thousand dollars, it may it may take me you know twelve or twenty thousand dollars to ship out this stuff, and that's gonna now start giving you percentages. So now we like we know that our shipping is you know twelve percent, and we're looking at it, and it's twenty four percent. We like, whoa, wait, something not right here. So we go back to the next month, 24% again. Go back to the next month, 24% again, 24%. Then we go back in our processes and say, hey, like, have y'all been? Well, actually, Nick saw. Nick I went saw out there and I'm like, let me go check on these orders. He ex- <laughs> and he saw that everything was priority. Then we go back to the system and, and figure it out. So this was something that we caught like on a computer screen. And we were able to see because we had the data to go inside our business and, and make those changes. Hey, don't let me find no mistake, cause it's boy is is the I'm ca- I, I'm in the middle of the road. I pull up to the side. I'm like they print every order priority. They print every order priority. Get them. <laughs> and then For real. What I, what I said. Marlon be like, Cal- bro, calm down, <laughs> calm down. We gonna do it. We gonna make it right. I'm calling everybody. I'm, I'm getting on them. For real. Definitely. Um, I got a few. One thing that jumps out is me not treating the business like a business early on. Um, started with a great idea and it hit. And you know, you got all this money coming in and you like, oh, it's up, it's lit. But not realizing you need to double down on the back end of, you know, the books and the business. Um, taxes, you know, I'll never forget the first time talking to, um, you know, you start making money, people like, yo, you need a CPA. At the time, you know what's a C- you don't want to say what's a CPA, but you thinking like, yo, what's a CPA? <laughs> you know, you can't be dealing with money and trying to ask questions the basics like that. So you know, being real hesitant early on, not asking the questions I needed to. But I never forget. Um, I was a couple months in to the store, and um, you know, we we opened up around the holidays. Um, came in and just killing it. You know, what I mean, I'm looking at the account. And I'm like, sheesh, it's it's up, right? So I'm like, all right, I'm making all this money. I know I need to get a CPA for something. Everybody keep telling me. Um, getting on the phone with her, and uh, I never forget. She was like, um, have you been re- remitting your sales tax? And we all know when we hit that, huh? <laughs> she was like, have you been remitting your sales tax? And I was like, um, like, what, like, you mean like, like you start hitting those? <laughs> like, like, like. She knew what time it was. And the first thing she said was like, yo, you know that's not your money. And I just remember like my stomach like sinking and I I was cool because I, I, I had the bread, but at my mind, you know, wasn't on it. Like at the time I had to do, um, I was reporting quarterly. And then you make over a certain amount, you gotta start doing the monthly. But every I that 20th, was- Every 20th, every uh-huh. 20th. It was nowhere on my mind. And um, it was a bunch of those situations that just kept happening. And um, as much as we like making money, you still gotta double down on the business part. And that ain't the fun part, I get it, but it's necessary, it's critical. It might be the most critical, the most important and critical piece 
um, of really just knowing your numbers and knowing your books and knowing, you know, the laws, knowing your taxes, knowing all the, everything, you know, do your homework. You got to do your homework because you don't want to be paying for it after the fact because they got some things called late penalties and they throw that on everything. They throw penalties on everything. It's to the point now I get a, I get, a, I get one. I just frisbee the joint across the room now because, you know, but it, it, it teach you like don't nothing teach you like hitting the pocket. You know what I mean? When you, when you get that pocket hit, it, it hit different. And um, another thing to piggyback off of, you know, when I first opened up, I didn't have, you know, the resources online wasn't what they are now. It wasn't this brand called World Envision giving us all the free game. It's kind of like figure it out how you go. So in the beginning, I made thousands and thousands and thousands of sales. And guess how many emails and numbers I collected? Zero. Zero. And then knowing the game now, I just I, I, I always beat myself up. I just think back like, yo, we could be into the tens of hundreds of thousands when it comes to data. But it is what it is. We playing catch up. But at the end of the day, when somebody buys something from you and they walk off into the world, is that the last time you're going to see them? You never know. But with that information, you always got them. You always got a piece of them. And that was something that I had to, like I said, I'm playing catch up now. But I, I wasn't even thinking that way in the beginning. You buy something from me, I'm dapping you up. Appreciate you, bro. Yeah, woo, woo, woo. Whole time he off into the world and I never see him again. Versus now, it's like with my team members. I told them, I said, yo, we got to get everybody number. We got to. I don't care. We we getting it. They going to have to tell us, hell no, nah, for them not to give us their number, right? We getting that number. <laughs> and... um. Cause I've been listening to these dudes, so they hype me up. Like, yo, you gotta get them phone numbers in your store like, online. I'm like, bet, bet, bet. <laughs> so I come back to my team and tell them, like, yo, we getting these numbers, and they was like, nah. What if they, what if they don't want to give it to us? And it's like something that you can't really take no for an answer unless they. You I can take time, 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 time. You might need you a can, receipt. You, you, <laughs> you can take no for an answer, but at the same time, you gotta be willing to. <laughs> you get, yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta be willing to put it out there to be like, yo. And you can switch it up, like for your receipt, we need your phone number. Whole time, you know, you you collecting that information, and then it's on them. You know, they can accept marketing or decline marketing, but you got to give yourself that opportunity to make another sale. Because at the end of the day, they just spend money with you, so why wouldn't they come back? I feel like a lot of us don't be thinking like that. We hype to get the sale, and then they off into the win. It's like nah, you get that information because the double back probably gonna happen. If they like the experience, if you got good merch, they probably gonna come back. So those were my big two um, in the beginning, and we still learning every day. Go ahead, go ahead on it. Package this stuff real, real slow. Hand that. Fo- go ahead on it. Type that in real, real quick mm-hmm. while I while I package you up. <laughs> Wait, I'm making everything. You might need to return it. You know, you're not gonna. You never know. You're not gonna be able to return it. Never know. You don't have a receipt. Let's stay connected. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So for the final question, I want to leave out on a light note before we get into the Q and A. Um, we all know it could be stressful. Entrepreneurship, branding. What are some ways that y'all relieve that stress? How you keep your stress level low? You play golf. What what, what you do? Hooping. Like are we we're traveling. I'm gonna be like just doing doing stuff like this. Honestly, we in a position now where we get to move around a little bit more. So like honestly, stuff like this relieve our stress when we get out the warehouse. You know, not backed up making videos all day long. You know, file, like getting off the schedule because like. For me, I literally have a robotic schedule, like like, boom, 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 this meeting, that meeting, right here, got to go here, go and work out. Like So when I'm out of the office, you know, I still work on my schedule, but it's a little bit more freedom, so I feel like I'm on vacation. <laughs> I feel like, uh, honestly, we be ready to work. The thing that stressed me out is when Marlon don't pass me the ball when we playing basketball, that's the first <laughs> thing. But really, like... Like, uh, just just really just competing with Marlon, like, kind of stress me out sometimes. I ain't even going to lie to you because Marlon, he don't, he don't lose easy. So I got to stay up there. I call Marlon at 6.30 in the morning. I'm like, where you at? I be hoping he's saying, man, uh, uh, I'm bringing my daughter to school. Or I'm still at the crib. Like, now I'm at the office. Like, damn, I'm on my way, Marlon. <laughs> I'm on my way. But in reality, like, bro, we be ready, we ready to work. Like, we always ready to work. We always ready to go, especially when we traveling. I feel like just traveling a lot, you know, it's crazy because at first we was like, man, we want to travel all around the world. I want to go everywhere for like a whole month. And then now that we're traveling, we'd be like, man, we got 
we got to get us some sleep here and there. But other than that, like this right here is our quality time. We get to always spend it with each other. We got um my brother Lou in the back that do do our videos. You really give him a give him a, a round of applause because that's how them YouTube videos get up there. So any sound issue, don't ask me about that tonight. Ask Lou, all right? <laughs> but other than that, yeah, me me and Marlon always joking, playing, being ourselves. And just being ourselves is really just keep all the stress level down because either you're going to like us or you ain't. It is what it is. Straight up. Um, I would say just staying true to who whoever you are and what you like to do. Don't lose sight of that. I don't care how busy it get. You know, it's certain things that as humans we enjoy and you got to find and make time for that. Cause that's what keep me sane. You know, for me, I like playing. I like hooping. You know, we balled these boys up last night. We got them up out of there. <laughs> know what I mean? But that's a whole nother. You <laughs> know what I mean? You know I mean? They ain't gonna see, see they quiet. They ain't see they quiet. They ain't gonna see the dub I got. Know know mean? Mean? I was tired after the second. You game, see what I'm saying? I'm it's like, like, it's the excuses come out now. But um, um but nah, just like I said, staying true to who you are, finding what you like to do. Or well, you already know what you like to do, but making time. Um. It go a long way, you know. I enjoy being outside. I like going, you know. I, I like going on jogs. And when you get busy, the first thing you want to say is like, oh, "I got to grind it out." And you put everything that you like to do on the back burner. You ain't even thinking about it. I can't. Money short this month, you know. We got to whoop, do whoop, whoop. But I'm like, yo, the harder it get, the more and more I try to tell myself to find that time to do whatever you want to do or like doing that gives you peace. Because mental health is real. Like, know what I mean, this this entrepreneur life will stress you out. And I've been full time. I got. I came home in 2018. For those who don't know, I was uh, working with the New Orleans Saints, and they. Uh, I was coaching for a couple years, and then last stop was with the Saints. Got let go. Came back home. Moved back into my pops' crib. Changed this garage out to like a shop, and you know, and just got to it. And through that entrepreneur journey, I found myself. You know, I had some highs. I had some lows. I had some happy moments. Had some frustrating moments. But all in all, I, I had to just keep reminding myself of, of the journey and how far that I came. A lot of times we won't give ourselves enough credit. You know what I mean? Like, as much as we do, it's like we can do more. As big as we are, we can go bigger. You know what I mean? We didn't had crazy months of making sales, and I find myself still not satisfied, still not appreciating, you know. And then it take, it take moments of me bumping into somebody randomly outside, and, you know, and they'll tell me, they'll give me my flowers, and then I... It's crazy how much I appreciate hearing it because I be getting lost in the sauce sometimes. Like, I be really, like, blindfold, like, the vote, what's the horse joints they wear in the race? The blinders? That's what it's called? Yeah. Oh, I, got <laughs> I be focused, right? And then, it, like, it be, it be, a, mean, it be a, me a meaningful conversation of somebody just kind of giving me my flowers to make me take a second to realize, like, yo, like, I am doing a great job. Like, yo, you got to make time for your family. I'm a new father. And it's a priority of like, yo, my son is top priority. Like, much as I love the brand, much as I love E-Rock and Sente, you know, when it comes to Trey, you know, and my family, like, that's 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 at the top. And um, to the point now, I'm like, yo, if I got to have him, like, well, he be in here too. Um, but I'm never going to be able to, I'm never going to put the brand over the things that, you know, matter the most. And I feel like no matter what we do in life, if we got the nine to five traditional job or entrepreneurship full time, don't never let that compromise the things that give us peace, you know, peace of mind. And that's real. Mm -hmm.